Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new series. Another clan gen challenge of sorts. And I think this one will be quite exciting because I will be trying on this uh, yearly speed paint kind of challenge that's been going around for, well, a long time now. <laughs> So I actually made my own clan called Tide Clan, and I will be playing that clan in private and sort of writing down what happens to each cat every year. And then I will be drawing them and you guys will see the speed paints of them. And of course my commentary is saying what has happened. So the cat being drawn right now is actually our um, Star Clan guide. His name is Storm Chaser, which, I mean, I named all the originals, I believe. Uh, but I tried to let them have randomized names unless it sounds completely horrible. <laughs> so this is Storm Chaser, our spirit guide. He is confident and a beloved kid sitter. But the most important thing is he had very strange dreams and... He kind of saw into the storms. We are on the beach territories. Uh, so he saw the storms and stuff overseas and somehow got a connection with Star Clan. He's been dead for a hundred years now, but eventually he did give our first leader his nine lives. So that's Storm Chaser. Um, a little bit about the territory as well. I'm kind of imagining that they live on the beach with like tide pools all over the place that they use to communicate with Star Clan. Um, and then there are cliffs all along the, um, the beach. So it's the beach, the ocean, and then on the other side of the beach there are tall cliffs where there are forests. So they kind of also go up the cliffs. They're very good climbers, these cats. Uh, so that's basically an introduction to Tide Clan. Now then, um, Tide Star is our first leader. He is confident and a good mediator. And this year he started off by um, having an apprentice called Splashpaw. And he really, really enjoyed talking to both him and Whitepaw at the time about clan matters <laughs> and uh, he seems to be enjoying sort of raising the young generation of of the clan. He is however very overconfident and got Splashpaw almost <laughs> um, well injured in a storm while they were training and he also ran over a thunder path with him where his apprentice almost got hit by a monster and he doesn't really seem to be learning that, you know, he's <laughs> kind of bringing this on to himself. So, yeah. And he is a bit worried about all the extra two legs coming over to the beach. Now that the weather is warmer, they can't really... I mean, they have to go to quiet parts of the beach. And even then there are two legs, basically. Unless they go on to the hard, rocky areas. Then two legs are usually not really found. <laughs> Um, he has a absolutely atrocious relationship with his medicine cat, Feather Breeze, um, because he, Feather Breeze keeps ignoring orders, so uh, that's not too great for him. Uh, we'll get more into that when whenever we get to the uh, medicine cat. He, um, he was shocked when... The medicine cat brought in two little kittens called Mist Kit and Gorse Kit. We will get to those later. And he is um, very, very passionately trying to convince Gorse Kit that she is not fit to be a warrior and will always be a rogue and heart. And we'll kind of get into more why he hates these two kittens so, so very much uh, later on whenever we get to them. Um, and in the end of leaf fall all the way to the middle of leaf bear he had this horrible horrible case of white cough it took forever 
Um, and it was difficult to be leader and everything. And it actually took one of his lives, so that's pretty cool. Uh, well, cool. <laughs> and quite unfortunate. And now he kind of has a... he's on edge whenever there's sickness in the camp. Uh, and he actually ended with getting a running nose this year. Um, but he confides in Nightclaw, who has uh, he's become very close to. Sandpool is our deputy. Um, her year started out not too great. <laughs> she was very, very unsure about being a deputy at her age, considering, well, it was just way too much for her. Um, she was struggling with a lot of the warriors not really respecting her. Well, one warrior in particular. <laughs> Um, and she often asked the medicine cat Featherbreeze for help. She kind of was pretty down. Uh, it, it didn't really work out for her. Uh, she was very frustrated with Eaglewing, one of the warriors, uh, because he was very biased towards all the apprentices. Or, well, towards the apprentices. Uh, he preferred White Paw a lot and basically ha hated Splash Paw. And I don't know why. And he also stepped on one of the kittens and just went by his day. So they kind of got into an argument because of that. Um, she and Tidestar actually tricked this same kitten and uh, <laughs> to test like her, her decision making. She's not very happy about that, but we'll get to that later. Um, but Sandpool basically turned it into a over exaggerated story for for future kittens about getting lost in the tides and why you shouldn't leave camp <laughs> um anywho she had a really hard time in the summer because of the heat uh, and her age she was basically just lounging in the shallow pools in the camp or hiding under trees uh had a horrible time going on patrols and such like that and she kind of wished that she could just retire um, and she does actually, she did get hurt at some point and was in the medicine cat then and she was so relieved to be out of her duties, but Tidestar kept coming in and talking to her. He was trying to be nice, but it was just way too much for her, which she felt pretty guilty about. Um, and then she hoped it would get better in Leaf Fall, but unfortunately her bones just started to ache instead, and she eventually decided to just step down um, and become an elder, which is going much, much better for her. She quickly became happy in her retirement and thanked Tidestar for all his companionship. Uh, and she actually enjoyed a really, really healthy leaf bear, thankfully for her. Um, she's trying her hardest to cheer up a cat we will get to eventually and actually became friends with one uh, a new member of the clan um although everyone here is is new to <laughs> to, to you guys but yeah uh, so the new deputy is a uh, nightclaw uh, before she became deputy she kind of helped shellkit with fighting moves at an early age um and her apprentice was White Paw, and her she she really really helped White Paw improve rapidly. <laughs> She's a really good mentor, um, but unfortunately she also has a bias. Uh, she does not like Splash Paw either, because he was really really on her and just begging her basically to train him as well, because uh, she was training Shell Kit and and White Paw. Um, and then later on she actually figured out the medicine cat's secret and she did help him with it unbeknownst to her leader uh, but we'll get into that secret in a little bit um and then we fast forward to when shellkit is apprenticed uh, they actually have Shellpaw and Whitepaw fight each other, and Nightclaw is very shocked to see the young she-cat's veracity uh, so early in her apprenticeship. And if you guys didn't know, uh, Nightclaw, she's bloodthirsty. Um, yeah, <laughs> she's quite aggressive. Uh, she has unnatural senses as well, but she's she's cool so far. So far, she hasn't done anything. 
Uh, she just lives a very harsh lifestyle, I think. She was most likely a rogue before uh, before joining the clan here. Well, founding the clan. Um, and then she becomes deputy, and she's very happy. She kind of manipulates Tidestar into doing her decisions as well. Uh, so she has a little bit more power over him. Um, but she's frustrated with how old she herself is because she wants to be leader. Uh, or at least stay as deputy, but it feels like, you know, that's never gonna happen considering she can't outlive Tidestar's nine lives, unfortunately. Uh, she is pleased with the new little kitten Gorse Kit and Shellpaw's feroci ferocious nature. Uh, she does like it, but she is also... You know, she knows how by herself that uh, that can <laughs> cause problems from whenever she was young as well. Uh, later on, she also realizes that she has a crush on Tidestar, which she's less than happy about, but she still enjoys being around Tidestar, so it's, you know, acceptable. <laughs> At the end of the year, she also... Um, there was a two-legs dog loose on the beach, and it actually chased after her. She did climb a cliff, but she uh, her tail unfortunately got really banged up. So she's kind of swearing war on all dogs if she does lose her tail, but we'll have to see how that goes. Okay, so here is our medicine hat, uh, Feather Breeze. He is very young. He's only 31 moons old. Uh, he's righteous and a good kid sitter as well. Um, and ever since he started in the clan, he has actually been helping a sick group of rogues and loners. Um, and he's worried he doesn't have a connection with Star Clan because of this, because he's been seeing ripples in the uh, tide pools. And he feels like they're trying to connect to him, but he, he just can't hear them. So he's, he's, uh, pretty sad about his faith, but he really, really wants to help these cats. Uh, and then he was caught healing the rogues, um, and Tidestar and Sandpool lecture him on loyalty, but he doesn't stop, um, because he, he knows that uh, there is also a struggling pregnant she-cat uh, called Minnie that is going to give, uh, well, have her kitten soon, and he, he really doesn't want to leave her alone with that. Uh, she does actually die a couple days after birth, and her two kittens, only two of three, actually survive. So he brings them back to the clan, uh, and then a warrior named Floodheart actually adopts him. Uh, he wanted to do it himself, but considering Tidestar is already super angry with him and everything going on, he decided that he can't do that. Plus he's a medicine cat, so we do play with the rule that they aren't allowed to have kittens right now. Uh, we'll see if that ever changes in the future, but for now we are playing with the original Worry Clan rules. Uh, anywho, he is punished by Tidestar for doing this, and he <laughs> loses a lot of trust in him. Um, and he also needs an escort wherever he goes, and he is very, very disappointed in Tidestar's and the clan's treatment uh, overall with the kittens. He feels that it's unfair that they are blaming them, basically. Especially when they were all rogues, you know, just six moons ago. Um, so he starts pretty much shutting down and focuses only on his duties, not really talking to anyone. Uh, he also panics as a warrior gets uh, warrior's injury gets very swollen and infected. I will tell who this warrior is later on. Um, and he feels like he's too young to know what he's doing, and he feels very helpless and very very alone. He doesn't have anyone else in the medicine cat. Then it is only him, um, except of course when when Nightclaw and sometimes Shelpa also help him in the uh, in the medicine cat then. Um, but this is also leaving him with small injuries because he's just kind of out of it and trips on rocks and such things. 
Uh, when Tidestar loses a life to the White Cough, he realizes that he himself has gotten Green Cough. And he strongly believes that this is Star Clan punishing him. So he freaks out and um, basically believes if he can't even take care of himself, how in the world would he take care of others? Especially when there's so many in the Medicine Cat Den. Um, and he's basically lying in his den completely numb as a strong wind uh, just ruins the entire Medicine Den. And he is takes this as a confirmation that Starkland does in fact hate him. But the next morning, he and Eaglewing, another cat who had green cough, are no longer sick and he is relieved, slowly, slowly destroying a little bit of fate, uh, faith in him. <laughs> um, he ends the year by also worrying about this the same warrior, actually, that he was worrying about earlier, who has an even worse injury now. And uh, again, I will re reveal this <laughs> mess of a warrior later on. Okay, so Floodheart. He's pretty old. He's 98 moons old. He is a compassionate, a beloved kid sitter, and a great hunter. And I love him. He is absolutely wonderful. He doesn't really feel comfortable around a nightclub because she's very uh, harsh. <laughs> um, but he is very, very impressed with Tidestar's leadership, and he's very loyal. Uh, Shellpaw actually becomes his apprentice, and he tries to double train with Whitepaw, but apparently the two she-cats are pretty awkward around each other, so he kind of stops doing that eventually. <laughs> um, he's also, I've never seen anyone do this, um, but he basically became the master of the prey pile. He knows everyone's preferences, and just, because there was one moon where he just everyone swapped with him so apparently he just goes around and is like hey uh that's urchin you know that's that's for a uh, night car to enjoy uh oh the the salmon oh well that's that's a uh, splash pass favorite <laughs> so he's really cute i i love him um and um his apprentice does actually get hurt later on shelpa uh we'll get more into that later on but he is worried, and he takes a solo patrol and runs into a she-cat named a River. She's very, very beautiful, and he cannot bring himself to harm the uh, pretty she-cat. So he kind of just fumbles his paws and escorts her out of the territory. Unfortunately, she did not want to join. Um... Anywho, uh, later on he actually adopts Mistkit and Gorsekit, and he absolutely adores them. He also tries to have them interact with Featherbreeze, but he just kind of avoids them, unfortunately. Uh, eventually he does see Mistkit and Featherbreeze starting to get along, but Gorsekit also always find, finds some sort of excuse not to talk to the medicine cat. She's, uh, she's a handful. <laughs> we'll get to her later. So after they do become apprentices, he worries for Gorspaw's personality and safety uh, because of what Mistpaw keeps telling him. So Gorspaw's feelings are very strong and uh, they're getting stronger every moon it seems. So he really does hope that um, his adoptive daughter can, can handle it. <laughs> but he believes in her. Eaglewing. Eaglewing is our creepy old man. I don't really know what to say about him. <laughs> He's 81 moons old. He's vengeful, a renowned hunter, and a great climber. So he's very nice, um, a very nice warrior, but he, he's, he's very, very weird. So I did mention earlier he does have a strong, strong bias towards White Paw rather than Splash Paw. Uh, he absolutely believes that she is super duper helpful and Splash Paw is just not helpful at all. And I mean, he, I, I don't even, he found a piece of Splash Paw's fur and then he kept it in his nest. I don't, it's really creepy. I don't, I don't know what he's on about. I have no clue, but it is very very creepy <laughs> and i don't really i don't really like how how creepy he's being um <laughs> i mean it makes for a fascinating character at least but but yeah he's he's quite weird 
Uh, anywho, he is also furious about two legs using their territory, and he actually saved Floodheart from uh, from one of their dogs, uh, and unfortunately got a broken bone because of it. So in the Medicine Cats, then uh, he actually imagines different ways of getting rid of Splash Paw, and like. You're 81 moons old, and you are so focused on this poor little apprentice. I, I don't even... That's, I don't know. <laughs> he does also start gossiping with Sandpool whenever she retires. Um, mainly about how horrible Gorse Kid is, and how uh, Mist Kid is just... way better uh, than her. And clearly, he is superior to a rogue. <laughs> Um, anywho, uh, his bone heals, but he does get green cough, and he has kind of feeling worthless, uh, well, feelings of worthlessness, and he kind of fakes sleeping to avoid talking to others. There's been a lot of injured cat this, uh, cats this year. Um, anywho, he does eventually get uh, cured, and when he does, he does curse the two legs, because Nightclaw has become deputy instead of him. Um, just because he was in the medicine cat then. I, I don't know if he would actually have had a chance. Uh, I'm sorry, Eagle Wing, but you, you are kind of weird. Anywho, he's also conflicted because he has feelings for her. <laughs> and he is furious and jealous whenever she pays more attention to Tidesar rather than him. I mean, she barely even looks at him. Atrocious. <laughs> Even though he took all that and survived a broken bone and green cough. How dare she not look at him? Um, in fact, it feels like she looks straight through him and he struggles not to snap at her. So all in all, he's just a weird little old man. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know. Um, yeah, he, he's, he has problems. Aspen Rip. Aspen Rip was not um, part of the original clan. He is not a clan founder. He was found by Splashpool, Bloodheart, and White Paw. Uh, although she was an, a warrior at this point, I almost spoiled her name. Uh, and White Paw, who's a warrior, <laughs> eerily tells him that he's fated to death if he does not join the clan. Um, and if he leaves uh, injured this way. So he does uh, get a bit unsettled and does go back to camp with them. He has a very, very hard time getting used to the camp and everything. Um, he's on edge in the uh, as an injured warrior in the medicine cat den. Well, an injured visitor, really. His name is only Aspen at this point. And he feels like he's unable to run or fight if needed, need be. So he's very snappy when Featherbreeze asks him personal questions. Uh, thankfully, Eagle Wing is also in the Medicine Cat Den, and he can actually tolerate him, as well as the kittens Mist Kit and Gorse Kit. Uh, however, Eagle Wing blurts something personal about Aspen to Featherbreeze. And he is furious and refuses to talk to him again. Uh, he does get healthy and he does not miss the life of a rogue whatsoever. Despite, you know, um, feelings of not really fitting in, he does actually choose to... Well, he wants to stay here. Especially now that a certain warrior has been taunting the rogues around the area. So he does confide in Tidestar, and he accepts naming him Aspen Rip. Uh, he still doesn't have a very good connection with anyone, but he does like Gorsepaw and Mistpaw. And he unfortunately ends the year with a case of White Cough. Here we are! So, here we have Splashpaw! who is training very, very hard under Tidestar's uh, mentorship. So he is very, very frustrated, uh, as mentioned, about Nightclaw ignoring him, and the fact that Eagle Wing also hates him, and that they both prefer Whitepaw. And unfortunately for him, he also very much prefers Whitepaw, because he has a crush on her. Uh, so he does quickly get his warrior name, which is Splash Dusk. 
And he goes on a patrol with the leader and the deputy, so he feels very, very entitled and is even more angry that um, Nightclaw and Eaglewing uh, don't respect him. <laughs> uh, and it also gets worse whenever Nightclaw pays attention to Shellpaw. Uh, he does get praise from Nightclaw eventually after fighting off a fox with her and Tidestar. Uh, his leg is badly injured, but he feels uh, hurt by the compliment, and he doesn't mind her that much anymore. Uh, she's definitely gotten better to him. Uh, he is sad, however, that it feels like White Paw, who is now a warrior, um, is completely just neglecting him after what happened to Shellpaw. And we will get what happened to uh, Shellpaw later on. Um, but she seems very, very distracted lately and doesn't really... Well, she never visits him, really. Um, and there are others who try to talk to him, including Sandpool, who's now an elder. He does snap at her and <laughs> calls her very weak for retiring. And they have a huge argument in the Medicine Cat Den, but he doesn't really care. He just uh, wants to be with White Paw. So out of the Medicine Den, uh, his injury has finally healed. And the second he goes out of the den, he sees White Paw uh, talking to others and is furious. He runs into headfirst into a storm. And I kid you not, he falls in the ocean, slams into a cliff, and is later found by White Paw herself on a search patrol, and his back is broken. He has just gotten out of the medicine captain. I don't even yeah, so he's the he's the guy that Featherbreeze is constantly worrying about about. Because he just gets these two giant injuries back to back. No pun intended. <laughs> So he feels absolutely hopeless and he stays silent and still, uh, as well as afraid and very alone. Uh, White Paw eventually gets stuck in the medicine cat den herself. She does try to talk to him, but he keeps being snappy towards her. So eventually she just stops talking to him. Um, uh, he does, however, overhear her and Feather Breeze uh, laughing in the middle of the night and it does dig quite deep to him. He was pretending to sleep at one point and they were whispering sweet things to each other. So he does understand that uh, they have a little secret, um, at least they've gotten one now while she's in the medicine den. Um, well it is unfortunately for White Paw one-sided but he does understand that she actually does like him and if he vows that if she doesn't stop, you know, disrespecting him, he will um, ruin her one way or another. So, uh, White Paw, she is in awe of Tidestar's leadership and uh, her mentor Nightclaw. She absolutely loves the two. Eaglewing is super nice to be around, in her opinion, and she's confused why Splashpaw doesn't like him. Uh, Shellpaw becomes an apprentice, and Whitepaw is very excited because Splashpaw is almost out of the apprentice den now. She does try to make her feel welcome by playing a prank on her, but Shellpaw is indifferent and she just kind of gives up. Uh, Splash Tusk does eventually become a warrior, and White Paw convinces Tidestar to let her and Shellpaw be taking uh, taken a trip with the young warrior. So he does actually accept this, and um, the three young young cats go on a trip together. Now, unfortunately, they are all too excited and way too immature for this, and they try cheer Shellpaw on as she tries a red berry. Now they are all very very shocked when she starts coughing up blood and wailing in desperation. Um, Floodheart does eventually um, find them and he is absolutely furious. Um, she does gain her white... Uh, uh, her, her white name. <laughs> her warrior name. Uh, so she is called Whitefoot. 
which I mean fitting <laughs> she does in fact have white feet so she's very proud and goes to check on Shellpaw to sort of tell her and um you guys she sees her ghost shimmering above her slowly rising uh, out of the she cat uh, she's rightfully so freaked out and runs away and cannot bring herself to visit the young apprentice again. Um, so it turns out whenever she became a warrior, she got ghost sight. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a pretty interesting one. So she can actually see the death of, of others, which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, she becomes distracted on patrols and Nightclaw, who was her former mentor, is less than pleased and she is not afraid to show her disappointment uh, by basically sighing every single time she does anything. <laughs> um, she does go on a lone hunt uh, when she hears Gorskit screaming in the distance and a barking dog. Uh, she does save the kitten's life but is badly injured. While she's stuck in the medicine cat den, she does try to cheer up Splash Dusk, but he seems very, very furious at her since he keeps <laughs> snapping at her. And she feels sad about his attitude, not really knowing where they went wrong. Um, and she kind of realizes just how far apart the two have grown since being young little apprentices. Uh, her do fur does warm up whenever Feather Breeze cares for her, and their midnight night talks are absolutely amazing. She does know that it's wrong and against the code, but she refuses to lie, her lie to herself, and she admits that she is in fact in love with the medicine cat Feather Breeze. Uh, Shellkit was a very impulsive little kitten. Um, she looked up to Nightclaw, especially when she helped her train her her uh, battle moves although she kind of just ended up rolling around on the ground <laughs> as a little kitten uh tidestar tells her that she can go out of camp if she wanted to uh she does this and is scolded by both him and sandpool they claim that they were testing her decision making and she is absolutely furious and feels very betrayed because she was simply just doing what her leader said was okay so she doesn't understand that at all and i mean i kind of agree with her that was a very very mean move <laughs> um anywho she is eventually apprenticed to floodheart as a bloodthirsty little apprentice um and she does enjoy training with splashpa who became a warrior much too soon for her liking uh, she doesn't really care much about White Paw. It's not really her thing, apparently. <laughs> so she confides in Tidestar that she really, really feels unsure and angry with all the cats around camp. Um, and she's actually surprised to hear that she listens to her. And um, she starts respecting him a little bit more. Because did, she did also complain about him. Uh, talking about when she was a kitten, how unfair she felt like she was treated. Um, of course, we all know Shellpaw is eventually poisoned, and she is absolutely convinced she's going to die. Floodheart does continue her training in the Medicine Cat Den, but she has a hard time focusing. Uh, it's all just talk anyways, she's more of a <laughs> physical action kind of kitty. Um, and things get even worse when she comes out of the medicine cat den because white paw has started avoiding her like green cough uh, who knows why in her opinion floodheart is super busy with his newly adoptive kits and he she just feels neglected in her training uh, she knows why of course with floodheart at least she doesn't understand white paw um, but she just feels neglected because of this, she eventually sneaks out on a lone patrol and fights off a rogue who was bullying a plump kitty pet Tom. Um, we will get back to him later, so <laughs> you can remember the little plump kitty pet. Uh, Floodheart does show her compassion in the form of a stranded octopus that uh, needed help to get to the ocean. 
um, they did help it instead of just picking it as easy prey. And she actually uh, thinks of the plump kitty pet and is surprised to think that uh, to find that she actually agrees with him. So at this point, she basically stops eating seafood, uh, especially octopi, and goes up the cliff to hunt in the forest more so uh, whenever she can. Uh, Tide Star offers to help her with her training. She feels a little bit uneasy about the patrol that something was off <laughs> and she was right because Tidestar was giving her a secret assessment. She does pass it and is named Shell Burst at 11 moons old. So she continues seeing the plump little kitty pet. His two legs are unfortunately leaving however but he promises that he'll uh, he'll see her against, again next summer. She feels betrayed and disappointed and yells at him not to come back. Uh, and then decides that only those in her clan can be trusted, uh, if even them. <laughs> Eventually she does send some rogues on the border, and other cats have been talking about it as well. She seeks them out with the help of Aspen Rip's information, and in secret beats one of them up. Somehow Tidestar is very very furious at her, and even when she proudly announces her victory, uh, stating that she has given them a cause to attack. But she doesn't understand she won the fight, so why is he mad? <laughs> Tidestar gives a gorse paw um, to her, actually, as an apprentice, and she is absolutely shocked to be chosen this young. And I mean, she was that young. She was like 12, 13 moons old. I don't know why she got an apprentice. But I, I let the game decide that um, with this uh, playthrough. <laughs> so interesting. Uh, especially when distrust was radiating off her leader. Uh, he constantly goes with them and just distrustfully looks at her. <laughs> so she's very, very annoyed by this. Uh, Shellburst does... Uh, Shellburst does go on a patrol with both Gorsepaw and Tidestar. They hear some yowling from the ocean and a cat that is uh, trapped in a bag is like uh, not very happy <laughs> as their two leg is trying to throw them in the ocean. Uh, Tidestar starts shouting orders at both of them um, and she does follow them and they successfully actually rescue the cat. We'll, we'll get to her soon. Um, but unfortunately, she is seething with anger and refuses to let him come on any more of their patrols in the future. Uh, he's quite dismayed about this, but he can't really do anything. I mean, he could, but <laughs> I don't think he wants to. Uh, Shellburst is on a patrol at, um, at the end of the year, where Eaglewing scoops up a defenseless octopus from a tide pool. And of course, with her, her newfound respect for the ocean creatures, she lets out, well, can't help but let out a deep, deep growl from her throat when he laughs at its pathetic display. And Gorsepaw looks at her mentor quiz, uh, questioningly. She watches him through narrow eyes as he eats, uh, eats it in camp with his friends. So that Shellburst, she is, uh, has some problems, but who doesn't here in this clan? <laughs> uh, Kit. she is a little daydreaming mossball hunter as a apprentice. Um, she's one of the kittens that was rescued by Featherbreeze after her mother Minnie died and was later adopted by Floodheart. So uh, Gorse Kid has always trained hard to learn the skills of a warrior, but she hasn't necessarily trained very hard to learn the ways of a warrior. And she gets absolutely horrible looks from the other warriors. Uh, well, some of the warriors, especially Tidestar. Uh, but she is grateful for her brother's help and support. And uh, Tidestar is by far the worst. <laughs> So, um, 
an interesting little secret here. Tidestar is actually Gorsepaw and Mistpaw's dad. Uh, yeah. So he had a relationship before becoming leader, and that didn't exactly stop when he became leader. He kind of had it going for a little while, and apparently he got... Um, his mate was expecting kittens when he eventually broke it off, but he didn't know. Uh, he definitely knew when he saw Mistpaw. <laughs> and Featherbees told everyone that these were the kits of Minnie. And with the timestamp, it did make sense. So that's why he hates them so much. Now, Gorse Kid talks to everyone while uh, stuck in the medicine cat den. Uh... Splash Dusk seems a little bit ungrateful towards, well, everyone. <laughs> and Gorse Kid is having none of it. She's also honored when Nightclaw, the strongest and most awesome deputy, gives her advice on her fighting stance as a little kitten. Um, after this, she does grow apart from Floodheart, unfortunately because she believes that he is too nice and doesn't really teach her any useful survival skills. Uh, when they do talk, it is unfortunately in the form of bigger bickering or arguments. Uh, she's also shocked when she's punished for being out of camp uh, when she was almost six moons anyways, and her apprentice ceremony is actually uh, has been delayed. Um, she does watch Mistpaw become a apprentice and gain his mentor before her, which she is absolutely angry about, even though, you know, Whitefoot is in the medicine den with a broken bone because of her. <laughs> but she doesn't understand it. Um, she doesn't see it that way. So, uh, eventually she is apprenticed to Shellburst, and at first she is very disappointed to realize that this young little cat who is, you know, barely older than her, is suddenly her mentor. Uh, but Nightclaw, then she remembers that Nightclaw actually spe speaks fondly of the young she-cat, and basically any cat that Nightclaw respects must be awesome as well, so she's pretty happy. Uh, she does run into a rogue named Envy eventually, and the name fits her well, she thinks, because she is super duper envy, envious of all the freedom and strength she has. Uh, so she actually thinks back on when uh, the fact that her mother is a rogue, and presumably her father as well, because they don't know, uh, and actually wants to run away with Mistpaw. So she asks him, uh, telling him that they are rogues at heart, but he looks horrified and she is unfortunately very disappointed and angry. So she hisses and turns around and it feels like no one understands her and her relationship with her brother unfortunately deteriorates a little bit after this. Okay, so Mistpaw. Um, Mistpaw is, of course, Gorsepaw's... Well, Mistkit at this point, but she is... Uh, well, he is Gorsepaw's um, brother. And, of course, with that, Tidestar's son. And uh, you guys, whenever he gets color, you can definitely see it. <laughs> uh, he doesn't mind all the, war uh, the looks that they get from the warriors. And he spends most of his time with Eagle Wing in the Medicine Cat Den. Uh, where it is a comfortable silence of the older warrior. Uh, he does sulk a little bit whenever his nose is running, because he's kind of mad about it. About it. Um, he also believes Nightclaw is too aggressive, and he worries that his sister is praising her so much. Uh, doubtful, he does actually give her a chance by sharing prey with her, and she is surprised to find, or he is surprised to find that actually her morals are really good and she's quite nice. So that's nice. <laughs> he is relieved that uh, Floodheart actually becomes his mentor. They aren't related by blood and Tidestar thought they would make a good team. So he's, he's very happy about that. And Miss Pa, of course, could not agree more. Uh, when Gorspaw asks him to live as 
rogues. He is quite rightfully so very, very shocked. Uh, he is a righteous little kitten. He doesn't want to leave the clan. He actually really enjoys it. And she's been acting out a lot lately. Um, and he feels like he's starting to grow away from her, unfortunately. He couldn't imagine such a harsh, li harsh life as a rogue away from their family. Um, and he's really sad to see her storm out. So, um, the last little cat that also was joined um, here is a very, very old 177 moons <laughs> old she cat. Uh, who's loyal and a good teacher and you guys things get sad a little bit real um, if you guys are a bit sensitive then unfortunately her story might be a bit too much uh, I know I got sad at least <laughs> so she is very very old and she's pretty darn frail so her backstory is basically she was born as a stray kitten um, as there are many of them and she was adopted by a, a bunch of different families. Just flew from home to home to home. And eventually she is taken in by two terrible, terrible, terrible two legs that keep throwing things at her. They keep neglecting her. There's nowhere for her to jump up on. There's no place she feels safe in her own home, basically. And one day they just put her in a bag, drove to the ocean and threw her in. Thankfully, she was saved by Tide Clan, but her story is very, very sad. And as if that wasn't enough, she actually broke her back in the event. And she unfortunately is lying in the medicine cat den. And this is the cat that Sandpool is uh, comforting and trying to be with her last days. And she unfortunately knows that this is how her life ends. But she is hearing stories of Star Clan, and it brings her a little bit of hope that maybe in the afterlife she can be happy. So that's Tide Clan. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this episode. It's a lot of work drawing all these cats, so I don't think I'll put up too many episodes of these. Uh, not only that, but writing all of it and noting down all the happenings in the clan, as well as, well, talking the entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work but it's very fun and I do hope I can get you guys a couple more of these uh, awesome videos and if you guys did enjoy it then uh, please do consider subscribing and tell me who was your favorite cat in the comments below I would love to know your opinions uh, anywho thank you for watching <laughs> I hope we will be seeing more of Tide Clan uh, probably not in a while it, it as I said, it takes a while, but it was really fun to do, and yeah, I, I think that's about it. <laughs> so with that, without further ado, uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye! Mm,